Hello and welcome to Griffin Art. Now today I'd like to show you another napkin fold. This one is called the Lily and if I just turn it in profile for you, you can probably see that it re resembles a water lily and hence the name. Now this is a very versatile napkin fold because depending on how far you take the fold, you can end up with three different shapes in your napkin depending on how you want to use the napkin. So it's a really good fold to have in your repertoire. Now before we actually start to fold these shapes, I am just going to take you through how you can use these individual uh, forms, you know, and, and what it can provide for you. Now this is the lily folded to its full extent. Now in my opinion, this doesn't tend to be used for individual personal place settings, but more for table presentation. So for example, if you have a formal table and you have something, let's say like Marmite, maybe it's a breakfast table, you've got something like Marmite, this isn't necessarily something that is easy to decant um, and you might just want to make it look a little bit more pretty in the presentation in a formal situation. Now simply by placing the jar of Marmite inside a lily folded napkin you end up with something that looks much more presentable and i will try and just turn that on its side you're not going to get a clear view but that's sort of what you get in profile something like that so you can use it for jars or jugs or anything like that that's how this napkin be can be used now secondly if you are running short of crockery and you or you don't want the washing up you can simply use these napkin folds as makeshift bowls. So if I just quickly take some chocolates, for example, and place those inside this folded napkin, these can be placed on a table, no crockery involved, but it makes a nice little presentation piece. Now this particular napkin is about 15 and a half inches when fully opened out but if you've got bigger napkins available you can even use the these uh, napkins in this way for things like bread. I mean in, in the old days I remember using them for Melba toast. I'm not even sure people make Melba toast these days but that's what we used to use them for. So I'm hoping that can inspire you a little as to how this particular fully folded napkin lily napkin can be used so i'll just set that aside for one moment now your second option is exactly the same shape but folded to one stage less and you can probably see how that gives you a bigger makeshift bowl and you know you can use these in the same way as you've used this one maybe for bread rolls that sort of thing but you can also use them if you just want to um, pretty up a plainer bowl so you could put your chocolates or your crisps or something in a plain bowl and sit it inside that napkin it protects your table a bit as well and you know it gives you another option there so that's how you can also use that particular fold which is folded slightly less I will take that out so that you can get a better look at the napkin for the time being now finally we have a very flat version and the simplest form of this particular fold and this can look very elegant just simply flat on a plate so this is just folded to its least extent and that gives you plenty of room for any personal uh, information that's pertinent to your guests so a place setting piece in the middle of a plate and if I show you there is a linen version that I've completed and I hope you can see how elegant it can look so uh, you can either set that so that it's in a square or you can turn it on its side so it looks more flower shaped I'm just going to raise the camera very slightly actually so that you can see that a little better so just excuse me for a moment there we go so I hope you can see that a little bit better all right so I'm just going to set everything up again and I'll come back to you. Okay, so this is all set up again. Sorry about the noise previously. Now, bearing in mind, this is the napkin in its simplest form. That's the fold that we are going to tackle first. Okay, so I'm using a paper serviette because uh, if you've watched my videos before, you will know that uh, I tend to work with an iron and ironing board when I'm dealing with my fabric napkins. So I am going to start out, as usual, with the napkin or serviette fully opened out, so we're, we're mimicking the situation that you would have with your fabric napkins. So for your information, just before we start, the uh, 
paper napkins that I'm using are approximately 15 and a half inches square-ish because they are rarely square and the linen napkins are about 18 inches square so you know that's the sizes that I'm working with this is equivalent the this paper one is equivalent to um, a 40 centimeter napkin that you might buy in the shops there are smaller ones but just bear in mind that your finished result will always also be smaller as a consequence okay so the first thing that we do is we fold the napkin in half and then we fold it in half again so with if you're using a um, paper serviette this is going to be your starting point and the only reason that we do this is to provide us with guidelines and we can find our center piece or center point rather of the napkin so we then simply having done that we open the napkin out again now very simply all we're doing is we are taking each of our corners so our corner point into that center point and making a crease okay so you're doing that with every single corner just bringing it into the center and this is essentially the the fold that you use throughout this napkin so we'll just do those very quickly let's bring it in you you're watching your corners really to try and make sure that they form a reasonably close alignment in those corner pieces doesn't matter if there's a gap you know just practice find out what you prefer really in terms of the final appearance so there we go so having put all those creases in and you would create this stage no matter what level you are taking this napkin to you always start at this stage so at this point you also do this so you turn your napkin over and make sure that it's just upside down now it is simply a case of repeating what we've just done but it's on the other side so again i'm taking that corner and i'm just bringing it down to the center point and creating a crease and i'm going to go around you know you can do opposites if you like it doesn't really matter how you tackle it whatever you feel comfortable with it's always my motto and then we just fold the other ones in to the corner you may remember doing something like this at school actually and you used to do put colors on the other side and you did something with your fingers to open and shut it it's something similar to that see that one's slightly out you can see how the napkin is not square because it's not meeting but you know we can fiddle with that afterwards I might want to take the corners out so just watch out for that and decide you know what how you want to deal with that actually even though it's not meeting in the center all my corners are meeting up reasonably nicely at this point and this is the bit that you see okay so once you flatten that out you have achieved the next stage that's what you're looking for now because we are keeping this fold in its simplest form we're not going to fold any more of this napkin all we're going to do is ease out from the back here so where you've got these squares on the back um, edge of your napkin you just take that little corner it's quite good if you just put your fist down in this area here and gently ease the paper out from behind now when it's sticking up like this or it's folding over just help it so that it's curling upwards and then you can set your corner down and that's basically how you're forming those little petal pieces in a way so you just do that to every single corner sort of fist down bring that up and just sort of lay it flat again and that's formed a corner petal and that's basically it you know if you just follow that round it's a very simple but quite effective and certainly it can look an extremely elegant napkin fold on a plate so there we go those up and just flattened out again you know if you wanted to have the corners slightly raised on your plate that's absolutely fine too but that's your completed napkin fold at that simplest form okay so I'm going to do the preparation so that we're not repeating ourselves in the video to uh, the phase one and then show you how you continue with the fold to produce a more cup like lily shape 
Okay, so if you are going to take your napkin fold a stage further and have something that looks more like this, and I've got a version in front of me, one is in the Egyptian cotton napkin that's slightly larger, and one in the paper serviette. Now we still start this fold process process in the ex exactly the same way. So I have unfolded that uh, paper serviette to take us back a stage, uh, but I will show you sort of where we're at. So if you remember, we initially folded our napkin in half and then in half again to establish our center point. And then we drew all our corners into that center point to form that first fold. And at this stage, we then turned the napkin over. Now, because we want an extra layer, we are not yet ready to turn our napkin over. It is always the last thing you do for the last set of folds. So instead, we're just going to go through the same process again. So having folded all those corners down once and without turning the napkin over, you're going to fold them all into the center again. Actually, I will do the opposites. I think I prefer to do the opposites. I hadn't noticed that before. So, there we go. So we're just doing that. So it looks very similar to what we did before, but we haven't f turned our napkin over onto the other side at this stage. And you'll see the difference. So this has given us two layers of petals. And at this stage, we can now turn our napkin over so you can see it's already much smaller than when we turned it over the last time. Now, I would just say that if you're going to take this stage further before you turn it over, just do another set of folds and then turn it over and you'll end up with a much smaller um, section here. But anyway, this has had two layers folded in. We're now going to put the final layer in after we've turned over, and as I say, you always turn over before putting the final layer in. So you can really put as many layers in as the size of your napkin will allow you to. It just means that um, as long as you turn it over for that last fold so that you can then ease those previous folds out as we are going to do in a moment. So I'm hoping that you can see, so all of those are now folded in again using exactly the same fold method. Now, as you can see at this stage, because we've got quite a number of folds in, we're building up some bulk along this edge and that means that all of these folds don't want to really hold. You can't crease them in place quite the same. So when you come to easing out, you might find it easier to just take a wine glass or something like that and place over the top of all of those folds to hold them in place. Now that going to make it far more easier for you to ease out all the corners and we'll start in the same way as we did before so if you remember we had that square piece we're doing exactly the same but this time we're not flattening out so you're just gently and you have to be a little bit more gently gentle with the paper versions because obviously they can be subject to tearing you just ease those out pull them upwards now I'm going to remove the glass for a second so that you can get a closer look at that let's bring that up for you so you're just easing it upwards. That's what you're ending up with. So that'll give you an idea of, as to whether you're on the right track. And then you do that for all of the four corners. So that's the last layer that you put in before you um, turned your napkin over. So we just ease those up. Keeping them as e even as you can. Let me just turn that around and keep just easing them up and out. Okay, so that's fine. If you're not happy with the shape, you can always tuck your fingers inside at the back, if I show you. And that's going to round that up a bit. I don't, I don't know whether you can see that, but I'll come back to that a bit later. So once you've done that, you've only pulled out one set of the folds that you put in initially. So actually we can go around again. And if I just show you at this stage what you're looking like underneath, so you can see the second set of squares because you put two layers of folds in before you turned your napkin over. So we can also ease those out. So we just do exactly the same thing. So we just get that corner and we pull it to the outside and around. And you can see that's now starting to hold the first set of curves in place. So you just go around, ease them out and pull them around. Okay. 
And if I remove my glass at that stage, you can perhaps see that we've got a much more rounded lily shape. Okay, so that is the second phase of that lily fold, but you can take it a step deeper as I implied earlier. So then just for the sake of those who are still not quite clear on how that works and how to proceed to that full lily phase, I'm just going to go and reprep another napkin and I'll take you completely through that process just in case you need that extra information. So I'll come back to you as soon as that's sorted. Right, so if you want to take your napkin fold to its full extent with the three layers in to complete the lily fold, and I've got one here again in a paper serviette, one in the Egyptian cotton napkin for you to see. So if you want to go as far as this, you need to incorporate an extra set of folds in the first phase of the napkin fold and that's what I'm going to take you through now. Okay, so I've already pre-folded because I think it's going to be easier and quicker to show you, but I'm just going to un unfold it temporarily to show you the layers. Um, so if I quickly do that, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll get the gist of it. So this was where we'd folded our first corner. This is a single sheet here. That was our first set of folds into the corner, which we did for our flat form. Then for the next level, where we wanted an extra layer, we put in a second set of folds. Now for this full complete lily, we've put in a third set of folds, so we haven't yet turned our napkin over at all. And incidentally, it does get harder to line all your corners up, you know, fiddle as much as you like, but it will be fine. Um, so, you know, that that's, that's our third layer. So we've actually folded three times our corners into the center without turning our napkin over at all. Now at this stage, this is where we turn the napkin over and we get our glass, oh, I'm sorry, no, we don't, not yet. We do our last set of folds. So at this point, and it, as I say, it does get more difficult. This is our last, last set of folds. So if you just think, the more layers you want in your finished form, the more folds you have to put in on the first side of your napkin before you turn it over. But to complete the piece, you always have a final set of folds once you have turned your napkin over. And if you think in that term, this becomes a very simple napkin fold because you're always repeating the same fold every time. Now I'm not spending too much time on my corners. You know, it's just a tutorial. I'm not going to be using these napkins. You know, it's up to you how fussy you want to be about the presentation layer. So there we go. So at this stage, you can see we've got something quite small that we're finishing off with and those are definitely popping up. You can see the spring in that. So we'll return to our glass, as I almost did a little bit too soon, um, and we can now start to ease all those layers out. So we're just doing exactly as we did before. You know, you can, you, we've got that square again. We're just going to pull that upwards. It's a little tight. You might want a smaller glass if you find this is a little tight against the glass. So we just take each corner out. I tend to work on the first one set at a time. I could potentially pull that other layer up there now if I wanted, but I tend to work round, do all four, and then go to the next layer down. It's up to you, you know me. I don't mind what you do as long as you've got an idea how you do it. That's the main thing. No right or wrongs in anything creative. So then it's that second layer. So we're pulling that up and as before, that starts to form a really good curve in the in the form, the shape of the napkin fold itself. So that's our layer two. And then we've got a final layer and that sort of comes up behind this first layer again, but it tends to sit a little bit more flat. So I hope you can see that. So that's our very first layer of folds that we put in and this is our final one. And that's now a, just a single sheet of material there. So we just go around, pull that final layer out and that's it. So there we go. Now you can see the shape of my glass there. If I'd used a slightly smaller glass, these probably would have pulled up further. So, you know, it's up to you. I'll um, leave you to choose whether you want a larger glass and a more flattened base to your form or you want a more rounded side. 
Okay, so that basically concludes my tutorial on the lily fold. I do hope that that's given you clarity and enables you to get the best out of that fold. Now, if you're interested in napkin folding, I am beginning to uh, increasingly produce additional videos for my channel. So please do have a look at those. And you know, thank you for watching today. And if you've got a chance to subscribe, please do so. It would be lovely to have you on board. Thank you very much.